What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Single Player Let's Play series. So, um, you may notice a couple of changes around here. Uh, I've been working on a pathway and have lit it up and stuff. I also have, uh, we've had Serene Seasons installed, but we're actually at the end of winter and at the start of, uh, like, winter spring. So, all of our ice here is starting to melt a little bit. Um, so, we still have a few remnants here and there, but for the most part, we're heading out of the winter season, which is cool. Um, you may also notice little things around the area because I've installed Thumbcraft, which is what I want to play with today. So um, we've had our fair share of fun stuff here with Psy, and I really love it, but I haven't used Thumbcraft since, like, Minecraft 1.8. So I will admit a couple of things happened off camera that I didn't realize would happen, and I have to apologize already. Um, that was completely my fault. But um, basically what has happened is I've gone through and mined a whole bunch of the V-Crystals. These V-Crystals are um, basically like the number one resource that you'll need for Thomcraft, from what I understand. However, I messed up by getting these. Because as soon as you take a nap, after having picked up one of these, you wake up with this book. And it says, Strange Dreams. So in the Strange Dreams book, it basically describes the process that you should follow. It'll say, um, in these dreams, I took three of those strange crystals I've been finding and ground them with a handful of redstone in a bowl using a piece of flint. The crystals had to be different types, but if I did it properly, then the result was some strange glowing dust. In the dream, I took the dust, sprinkled it on a bookcase, but then the dream ended before I saw what happened. I wonder what I should do. What the dream, or I wonder should I do what the dream showed? Uh, I had the impression the dust was going to reveal something wondrous but dangerous. So uh, I tried it. And just to kind of get an idea of, do I have a clue of what I'm doing? And I think I do. So I will show you guys kind of how it works. I'll take some of the crystals that I have more of. Um, in fact, I'll do these three. And just grab a... Whoops. I will want that later. If I grab a bowl, I should have a bowl somewhere. A bowl and a piece of flint. Then I can combine these things in a crafting table. Uh, somewhere I'm doing something wrong, and I don't remember what it is. Hmm. Give me just a minute to figure out what it is that I'm forgetting already. Redstone. I was forgetting redstone. So, if you take redstone, bowl, flint, and a bunch of V-crystals, um, it'll consume your redstone and the V-crystals, but it won't consume your bowl or your flint. So, very straightforward. Not that difficult. Um, so this is pretty cool, but um, this is just kind of step one. So I've prepared the things that we're going to need to make a bookshelf, and this is where we really get into it. So I'm going to put a couple of things away. Um, I suppose so we can just do it like that. That'll work. So if we get one of these Salus Mundus and right-click on the bookshelf, boom, we get this weird looking book. And this is the Thaumonomicon. This is our beginning to the end. Um, there's a bunch of different paths that'll end up coming up over here on the left side, and we can search through them as we uh, progress. But the most important part is you have these first steps that you have to start your research on. So we've already completed a little bit of this research, but we do need an arcane workbench. So let me grab a normal crafting table. I don't believe I can use one of these. I can try. Maybe it's using the ore dictionary? It looks like it is. Cool. So this is the arcane workbench. And this guy has 262 something available. You can kind of see what that is all about later. Um, I'm not really sure why my sword is so sparkly either. That's kind of kind of strange. Whatever. Just the sword. I wonder what happens if I move it out. It's literally just the sword. How weird. Whatever. Um, but the Strange Dreams book is not really going to serve us much purpose from here on out. So I'm just going to put that here. Side note, I think it's kind of funny that these very much match. So that's going to get us stage one. And you can see, complete. And once you complete these things, you're going to get other things unlocked and available to you. So, uh, the next thing we should probably make is a thalmometer, and this guy is just four gold and a glass pane, so we can definitely afford that. 
Um, let's see, four gold, and I think I probably already have a glass pane. I do indeed. And we also need one of each of the crystals, which I've been working very hard towards finding. So now we can put these all into place. And boom. So you're going to see as soon as the recipe is formed, they have these cool little runes showing up around them. Um, and it'll tell you, okay, 20 V is required. 262 available and thermometer. So this guy lets you right click on a handful of different things, try to scan them for information that you may or may not need, may or may not find useful. So things that you have not yet scanned will be shimmery and sparkly like this over here. Um, and it'll tell you, you can see uh, in the little status indicator area, uh, you have learned something new or you have learned nothing from this. So, um, you know, in essence, it's, the, it's just mostly a process of running around and scanning a handful of different things. You'll every now and then get some random information that may prove useful to you, and you just never know what you'll find. So I'm, you know, going to keep this around, kind of randomly scan some stuff. Um, never hurts to scan pretty much everything from what I've discovered. I mean, you know, nothing's really going to hurt you as far as checking and seeing what's up. Um, but yeah, so I think I've covered most of the important bases so far. Um, going into here now, we're going to have um, stage two of three complete. And now, um, if we look into here, it's going to say first steps completely done. So this is going to show us our knowledge totals, the things that we have looked at so far. Um, and then the aspects of Essentia. This is going to show us most of the important aspects and how to create these compound aspects from primal aspects. So um, all in all, this is sort of a reasonably useful thing to have. And also, um, I don't have the add-on for inventory scanning, but if you throw an item out on the ground, you can always scan it as well. Although the wand does not seem to offer anything new to us. I wonder if these do. They do. Excellent. So I'm going to go through and just kind of scan a random handful of things and see what I can find. So I've been running around scanning stuff, and now we can mark this area as complete. Now, uh, I need to make a cauldron, so we're going to kind of need to get started with some of this stuff here. And, uh, you know, there's quite a few levels of detail here that we can get into. Uh, and this episode, I definitely want to get pretty far into this stuff. I don't want to get super far into Thomcraft. I don't want to ignore other mods, but I definitely don't want to ignore Thomcraft either. So we're going to need a couple of pieces of iron. Which I'm actually kind of starting to get a little bit low on. I might need to go mine some at some point. We want to make a cauldron. If we take this cauldron and right-click on it with Salus Mundus, it turns it into a crucible. And so now we can grab the crucible. We can also grab our workbench here uh, if we wanted to grab that real quick. Maybe start putting everything together in a thumbcraft area. That might not be a bad idea to do. Um, so why don't I do that? I'm going to look into a couple of designs for us to uh, look into. That way we can build up a nice little place, maybe even a tower, uh, to do our thumbanami, namakama nama stuff. Our thumbcraft stuff. So, um... Yeah, thaumaturgy is kind of a cool thing to do, but I don't necessarily want to do it all in one place. I'm trying to expand out a little bit house-wise, so yeah. Um, otherwise, I think we're doing pretty good seasonally. It looks like we're definitely mostly thawed out for the spring, so very cool. Uh, let me come up with a design, probably do a quick build montage of it, and I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so I've got a plan. Um, this is something that I did a little bit... Uh, I think it was a couple of servers ago, actually, where I wasn't even doing a Let's Play series. I had a design that I really enjoyed, and I would like to do it again. Um, it was really clever, and I think it'll work really well with the whole multiple magic mods all kind of being open and hard to contain. Because they are. You have to admit that mods like Batania and Astral Sorcery and Thomcraft, they're very open mods. They're very uh, difficult to constrain into any particular area, really. Um, you can try, and it's not impossible, but it's not easy. So I'm going to do an homage to Super Mario Odyssey, and that is Floating Pyramids. So Floating Pyramids are how we're going to go about it. I think it'll be really simple to do, um, but how we get up there is where we're going to run into some trouble. So I want to look at Ender.io's Travel Anchor, if I can spell, 
And this guy is pretty straightforward to make, so it's going to be a little bit of conduit binder, which is just clay, gravel, sand, some iron ingots, which we obviously have, and pulsating crystals, which are diamonds and molten, pulse, or molten pulsating iron, which you can alloy using iron and resonant ender. So let's see, um, that was, that's half an ingot and half an ender pearl. So it's actually more efficient to do it this way, surprisingly. Uh, so we'll do one of you and one of you. And we can also go ahead and grab those two diamonds because we're going to need them anyways. All right, we finally have this stuff done. Uh, I guess my calculations were wrong. Um, it's exactly one-to-one -to, -one to what the normal recipe is, which is fine. I'm not offended by it, but uh, I definitely misread. Probably the output is what I was misreading. More than likely. Uh, so let's see. We have another ender pearl. Fortunately, we have plenty of those. And I've already cast one. So there's our pulsating crystal. We're going to need four of these guys. Um, so for those who don't know, um, I've been working on my mod V tweaks lately. I'm using a basically unfinished beta right now, testing it out to make sure that any little details that I need to address have been addressed before it's too late. And um, I'm so far pretty happy with how things are going. There's nothing that I've been uh, depressed by yet. So one of the things that I've done is if you're on the surface and it's not a new moon, mobs won't spawn. So it means that we can work through the night some if we wanted to, although I still prefer to work in the day just for the fact of the light for the video. I don't know why I fell through the slabs there. Um, so I will still probably sleep through the night most of the time just for the sake of uh, video content being brighter, which is usually preferred. But otherwise, um, I'm pretty happy with how that part turned out in particular. So I'm going to grab a backpack, uh, not really maybe a backpack full, but definitely a good handful of things uh, to bring with us. Now I'm going to throw some of this stuff in my backpack for now. I don't think we're going to need all of this stuff with us, so may as well uh, free up space where we can. And I'm um, definitely going to need this to go away. And I don't really need that. So, sorry, I'm just going to take a brief look of what all we may or may not want to bring with us. So we'll use uh, cobblestone a little bit and grab some from here. I think I've got these turned off for right now. That's fine by me. So now we need to get ourselves our um, sort of transportation system, if you will, between up and down. So I don't know where we're going to put it, but we can figure that out more, I guess, securely later. There's not really anything that we have to really stress about getting done right this minute. Uh, for now, we can just put it here, and we'll just call this a uh, porch. Put that there. So now, if we come around to it, we'll see porch, and we can teleport around once we have other stuff. So uh, the key to these things, I've noticed, is that if you want to avoid having mob spawning problems, you want to have them um, lit up underneath or with some sort of water, which is fine, too. So I just want to take a look and see. I think over these water sources would actually be a really good place uh, here. We can do this to get down quickly. So I also tweaked the uh, Psy, uh, magical Psy casting sound. It's a little bit obnoxious if you ask me. So it's nice to have an alternative that maybe isn't quite so bad. Uh, so let's see, anything new or good? Not really. Cool. So we can maybe do one of them over here, I would say. We're going to have probably end up having three or four of these pyramids, but definitely good to go ahead and start planning now. And so they're going to need pretty, need to be pretty high up in the air in order to uh, work with the um, the vision that I'm going for.
So I will go ahead and probably start montage mode here because I'm definitely done with talking. And uh, yeah, I'll come back once we have probably just one pyramid for now. I don't think we need too many pyramids. Um, so we'll start with one and I'll meet you when we're done.
All right, so what do you think about this, guys? Um, so we have an elevator downstairs where we can have our crucible for various melting of things. We also need a infinite water supply up here, but that's to be configured later. We have our uh, travel anchor back from between these two. And if we look at it from above, it does not look that bad. Just a single floating pyramid for now. Like I said, I'll probably have a couple others staggered around throughout the little lake areas, uh, connected by bridges probably, um, because astral sorcery and a couple other things will definitely require it. So this area up here is currently unused, but I believe I remember there being some things in Thumbcraft that we will use that space for very soon. So, where were we? Oh, I also brought my Thomcraft stuff up here. So these are just the Thomcraft resources, and this is actual Thomcraft specialty items. So, uh, starting out, we have Discovering Alchemy. We made that crucible, if you recall. And let's see. At this point, we need to just make some yellow niter. So, um, this is kind of where we can go next. Um, we can also take a look at some of these observations and things that we've made and types of knowledge kind of read through some of this stuff so I'll admit I am skipping through a lot of this stuff that um, I'm not really looking into too thoroughly but um, I'll get there I will have to read through a lot of it again but that's okay I'm not really stressing that too much so I know we need a scribing tool and uh, that's just going to be a bottle, which I might actually have over here in the junk chest, but no, it doesn't look like it. I swear I had a bottle somewhere, but I might be thinking of a different world. Yeah, it looks like I'm thinking of a different world. So we can do, um, I could do glass file, which would probably be a better idea. We'll use those in the end anyways for some other stuff. And then we'll just need an ink sack and a feather. So let's go ahead and get those together. The glass file and ink sack feather gets us scribing tools. And I left some wood up there because I knew we'd have to craft a few things. So why don't we get started for those things that we're gonna need. Um, we're gonna want, I think two tables probably. I know we want at least one. And that gets us our research table. So this allows us to work on various theories and such. Uh, we're also going to need paper inside this guy. Um, very fun stuff. So we've already completed this. This is going to give us the access to theory crafting. Um, we can unlock a lot of this stuff here. Uh, celestial observations are very cool. You notice the link between the phases of the moon and the speed at which aura replenishes itself. You should investigate the phenomenon further to expand the and expand your investigation to see if other heavenly bodies influence magic. Cough, cough, astral sorcery says what? A few minor tweaks to my thermometer should make it able to take measurements from objects in the sky. I should remember to carry some paper and scribing tools with me to take notes. Um, measuring the same body or quadrant of the sky more than once a day will not give me new insights. I need to study them over a measure of changes with... Uh, over time to measure changes in their oral influence. The notes I gather should come handy for theory crafting. So you get a lot of uh, random little things here and there throughout the uh, research process. There's also a new tab available to us called Alchemy. Um, this is where I was kind of wanting to get started. This unlocks quite a few things immediately. Uh, once we've gotten in here, we can do things like metallurgy and tallow and various uh, various other things that we can kind of get into. But I really think that we should first get into Nitor, because Nitor is very simple. So, place a crucible over fire, or any heat source, which we have done. Next step, add water and wait until it boils. So that's the step we're at now. Like I said, I need to come up with a water uh, replenishing method, and there's one in Thomcraft. In fact, it might be, it looks like it's right there. So we might want to go for that pretty soon. Magic Tallow is pretty straightforward, so we just need to find something with Ignis and then throw in some Rotten Flesh. So if we do Tallow, I'm pretty sure I don't have the add-on yet for that. I do not. No problem. Uh, so there is an add-on available, I just don't have it yet for JEI and Thumbcraft. So Ignis is probably, if I had to guess, Nether... No, that's not quite right. I'm looking for something that has purely Ignis, but it's very difficult to do that, I'm sure. Um, 
just going to kind of scroll through some of this stuff and see what I find. Um, I see definitely plenty of stuff here that has some Ignis, but definitely not as much as I'm hoping for. Or not as purely as I hoped it would. See, these all have other attached aspects as well. But that's okay. I guess we can just go for uh, magma blocks. I never really use them anyways. So if each one of these gives me 10, that means I can do 10 at a time for one of these. I also needed water, if you'll recall. Um, I'm thinking... I'm thinking that actually we could do an infinite... Oh, no. Crap. Uh, that's unfortunate. I'm going to go get that real quick. Well, crap. I guess we'll just run over here. No biggie. Sometimes this guy is not the most reliable source of travel, but it's still pretty good. So, um, like I was saying before the incident. I am thinking that in theory we should probably be able to just put a water spring here for now until everything is settled with a item that I'm working towards very soon. So yeah, we just have to wait for this to boil and once we have, that did not go as planned. Okay, let me clear that and read into this again. Add ingredients with the Essentia required by dropping them or clicking them in the top face. Shift right clicking with an empty hand will empty the crucible. Each crafting will also require water to punish now and gain. Piping mechanics can be used for this. See, that should have totally worked. Oh, did I need to learn something for this? See, this is very straightforward. It's one Ignis. Hmm. Let me go grab some Netherrack, which has much less uh, attached aspects, and see how that goes. And that has more, so we don't want that per se. Yeah, we'll just try Netherrack. So this has enough for two. Okay, so that did work. I guess I just overwhelmed it last time. Okay, so now we have magic tallow. And we can go on and look at this. We can do a whole bunch of hedge alchemy now, which is really neat. So we can uh, create extra slime balls and extra mob drops and items just by implementing and incorporating other items that we can also get. We can also make tallow candles at this point, which I will probably look into very shortly. Um, and the other thing that I'm hoping for, current stage 2 of 4. Okay, so it wants me to make, um, make something new, I guess? Okay, so it wants another slime ball. Now, I'm thinking... I'm thinking that... Um, well, I don't know. So I have an idea. We'll see how this goes. That, that didn't go at all. Okay. Uh, well, let's try that again in just a minute and see how that goes. So I'm wanting to find a way of creating slime balls from other slime balls. So I think these can interchange, but I don't know. Um, I'm going to grab a couple of these because we need five water. See, and I'm having a hard time finding anything that's purely water based. Definitely quite a struggle. So, um, ba, 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 ba. see, like all of these things have extra aspects attached to them. 
and not just a couple of aspects, like way too many aspects. And that's definitely problematic. Now, water buckets don't have any aspects on them. Dang. Uh, so these have... So fish has five and five. So I just need that life aspect, which I don't know of an easy source to get it from. Maybe wheat. Yeah, wheat would work. Wait, not life. Uh, oh, alchema. Well, that brings a lot of crap with it. I'm trying to think of something that doesn't bring a whole lot of junk alongside it, but I don't know. And honestly, we can also try these. I don't know how well those work either. Okay, so that was easy. Um, now, I'm curious though, observation, alchemy, and items that need to be crafted. So I need to now craft glowstone, gunpowder, and ink sack. Okay, so I mean, I guess technically, if I just want to use two, I can just do that. Glowstone, gunpowder, ink sack, so I can just do two of you, two of you, and two of you. Like, it's not really a difficult recipe to do. At least I don't think. Maybe I'm missing something. So if I do that, you happy? Yeah, you're happy. So I don't really get what the big shebang is here. Like, not really doing anything special by doing this. But I guess the idea is just get better at some of this stuff. So it's also teaching me a bunch of different recipes here. Oh, see, like this one, for example, is really useful. Uh, string cobweb? Okay, and a lot... Um, wow. Just wow. Interesting. Um, so I guess we can do these real quick as well, because I think this will probably be where we wrap up is after this. Thumbcraft research gets a little bit long and tedious, so I don't want to keep the episode too long and boring, but I definitely did want to get started with that, because it so far seems to be pretty fun, just like old times, uh, for sure, at least on my side of things. So uh, it said we had to have, um, let's see, what did it want? It wanted, for the lava bucket, it wanted 5 and 15, so through 5 and 15. Is that uh, 5, so 15 Ignis, more Ignis. Okay, so let's try this for crafting a lava bucket. Okay, that definitely worked. Super cool. Now, I know I'm doing bad things to the environment by just tossing that stuff out, but uh, for right now, it's sort of the best solution I've got. Um, now, I wonder if I can cheese the cobweb recipe a little bit. No, doesn't look like it. Okay. I was just curious if I had uh, come up with a different way of making it, maybe, but nope. So I don't know what has vinculum yet, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and do the last of these off-camera. This won't really get too much more interesting, I promise, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave it now and uh, meet you guys in the next episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.